it's a genetic problem. There's still a lot we don't know about it. This is very, very real. This is a physical problem. It can be socially excluding. You put yourself in your own box. Let's talk about EDS. 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 Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, known as EDS, are a group of rare connective tissue disorders. It is known to alter the biology of the collagen in the body, the most abundant protein. It can lead to multi-systemic symptoms. It is an illness with no cure, but every patient is affected differently. Nevertheless, practitioners' awareness of this condition is generally poor, and most patients await years or perhaps even decades before receiving the correct diagnosis. There are different types of EDS. The most commonly known is the hypermobile type. One in 5,000 people have hypermobile EDS. This statistic could be up to one in 2,500 due to poor diagnosis. Is there a gap in the education for EDS? Do general practitioners need more knowledge on the topic? Let's talk about EDS and find out. First, we spoke to general practitioner, Dr. Kate Barnes. She's well informed, top of her profession and has over 20 years experience at the NHS. So I'm Dr. Kate Barnes and um, I'm a GP. I think there's a lot of confusion about what EDS is. Historically, it's just been about stretchy skin and um, hypermobile joints, but a lot of people are struggling with the multisystemic features to it. So there are many gaps in the education. We need more awareness of this condition and the complexity of it. There are definitely a large group of patients out there who have been seeing their GP probably on numerous occasions over the years and the GP has been scratching his or her head unable to work out what's going on with that patient in front of them. In some cases they may have been put into the melting pot of chronic fatigue syndrome or they may even have been labelled hypochondriacs or malingerers. So we're relying the whole time on careful history and examination and this is really the crux of the problem is that a lot of doctors feel happy at making a diagnosis based on a test that's done rather than just clinical judgment. Kate's knowledge of EDS didn't all come from being in the healthcare profession. So how are you feeling today and what are the plans? So it's always a massive struggle to be honest in the morning. Kate herself has met face to face with the condition. I feel like a dead weight when I wake up. I really knew very little about EDS before. In fact, if you'd said EDS, I would have said, what's that? I'd heard of ehlers danlos Syndrome. But um, at medical school, we had one slide. And, um, you know, you might have been asleep while it was going through. The initial symptoms that I was experiencing um, were of generalised pain and fatigue, um, which had been going on really for quite a long time. But after I had my second child, um, I really got a lot of musculoskeletal pain. Um, went to see a couple of rheumatologists, joint specialists, um, who weren't really able to come up with any specific diagnosis. So I lived really with this generalised musculoskeletal pain and fatigue well, for the next 20 years. Kate found out about her condition during her adult years, but for 17-year-old student Benjamin, this was very different, but none the easier. I'm Benjamin, I'm a media student from Salford City College. I really like reading and producing poetry. Instead of thinking about the pain and stuff like that, I can sort of translate it into words to help people understand me. What makes a house a home, the bricks are the people. What makes a church, the congregation, are the steeple. What makes the family the love or the blood? What makes a gangster the crime or the hood? What makes you sad, others or yourself? What makes you weak, ignorance or help? What makes a poem the message or the rhyme? What makes a friendship action or time? What makes you fear sleep, the nightmare or waking up? What makes you better, getting sober or staying drunk? Uh, I have EDS and it just makes all my joints dislocate very easily. I had to wear dress shoes a lot as a, a kid 
because they were the only ones that went into adult sizes that fit me, but that wasn't good for my legs. And then one day for Christmas, I got a pair of Jordan Eclipses, first trainers I ever owned, and they really helped. They really took all the strain off my legs. Before that, I stopped wearing shoes completely. I just had to go out in bare feet. Sounds weird, but the natural foot on the floor helped my legs. But then I collapsed one day and shredded all the muscle out of my foot. So they said, no, you've got to wear trainers, so we're going to get your trainers. Next, we spoke to Lara Bloom, the co-executive director for the Ailis Danlos Society, an international organisation led to spread awareness, bring sufferers together and creates a safer and more respectful environment for individuals with EDS, wherever they are globally. My name is Lara Bloom and I'm the co-executive director of the international charity, the Ellers Danlos Society. So the Ellers Danlos Society was set up in May 2016 as a reaction to there not being an overarching international organisation to oversee research and progression and collaboration. So Ellers Danlos Syndromes is a, a group of connective tissue conditions. Out of all of them, we know the molecular information, so we know what the gene mutation is causing. The, the type of EDS. However, for the most prevalent type, hypermobile EDS, we still don't know what the gene is. And because of that, it's taken a lot to get to some kind of agreement on how to diagnose this if we don't know what the gene is. We know that a lot of comorbidities come along with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, especially the hypermobile type. So when people call up the charity and say, I've just been diagnosed with EDS, does this mean I'm going to end up in a wheelchair? Absolutely not. You know, but if you ignore it, or if you let the medical professionals around you ignore it, that's when it can become a real problem. So I'm Catherine Shemansky. Catherine has struggled with treatment. Once diagnosed with EDS, she wasn't offered the best advice for her condition. She became wheelchair bound in 2012 and is now learning how to walk again. We met with her so she could share her story. I have Ellis Danlos syndrome. I'm your original bendy stretchy person and with me it also does affect skin. I have had some fragility of internal organs as well but mostly I dislocate joints, very hypermobile. It was a very well-meaning doctor who perhaps didn't have the greatest of awareness of the condition who I'd seen originally advised me that I was better off to use a wheelchair just simply because I was dislocating joints and he didn't want me to continue to damage things. However, as time's gone by I've been down to London, seen experts, had specialist input but it's been pointed out that actually it's good to try and keep moving, to try and manage the condition as well as possible and to keep as normal as possible. So I've been working very hard with a physiotherapist now for the last maybe three years or so. So we knew that something had to change because at the moment geography determines your quality of life with ehlers danlos Syndrome. And for some people that means that you just don't get a diagnosis. For some people that means that journey to diagnosis causes you to be far iller than you needed to be. It's simply not good enough. So for people to have the quality of life that they deserve and that it is possible, we need to make sure that no matter where you go to see a doctor, they are using the same diagnostic criteria so that you can expect a correct diagnosis and then know the correct pathways to go down to ensure you have the proper management and care. We also spoke to Dr Kate Barnes, family and colleagues, to understand the impact it has knowing there has been a formal diagnosis of her condition. Well, living with my mum's great, but living with my mum with EDS is a bit of a different story. It's made me, you know, be able to pay back all those good things that she did when we were younger. So, you know, I might be more uh, conscious about maybe ask, asking if she wants a cup of tea. The, it's, yeah, it's been a bit of a shame in recent years. Um, she doesn't know how she's going to feel, like the day after or two days after. Yes, my dad's been great with regards to helping my mum. Uh, it's very unpredictable how it's going to be from day to day, how that person's going to be, how well or unwell they're going to be. And, um, yeah, it's just a case of trying to be flexible and taking each day as it comes, really. I remember asking her, what on earth is EDS? I never heard of it before, um, but it, it made a lot of sense. It was hard to begin with, but um, as time's gone on, it's got easier. And uh, I think as a family, we've just learned to cope with it, really. We reached out to many specialists to contribute to this documentary. Quite worryingly, a lot of them said they were not educated enough on the subject to comment. 
but a few were working very hard and were too busy to be filmed. The Ehlers Danlos Syndrome National Diagnostic Service at Sheffield's Northern General Hospital couldn't be filmed at this time, but did respond with a comment. There are many different types of EDS. The most common type is known as hypermobile EDS. The cause of hypermobile EDS has not been identified, suggesting there may be a number of different causes. The other types of EDS are all rare. The EDS National Diagnostic Service was set up in 2009 to aid diagnosis of the rare types of EDS. Although patients with EDS learn to adapt their lives around the condition they have, every patient is affected differently. A person spent their whole life in hospitals, in casts, and like, I don't know what it is, I'm just unlucky, I'm clumsy. And then you say, no, you've got a condition which has been causing this, avoid these things, then you're not stuck in a hospital, then you can be you can live a normal life. It's really nice just to actually have a name to put to what's wrong with you. We have connective tissue all over our body and so it presents differently in different people and this is what leads to the, the difficulty so often with diagnosis. People think they know what it is and that's even more damaging than the people admit, who admit that they don't know anything. So not only do we need to educate, but we need to re-educate. As an illness with no cure, it is important that sufferers are getting mental support too. If you have been affected by anything within this film or would like to know any more information, visit www.alus-danlos.com for further information. Let's talk about EDS. 